try to get back in, but uh, I seem to be head going in and out, but let's get going. Yeah, I see. Um, also, no Jean Marie, right? And, Correct. Uh, yeah. And no minutes to review, so we can dive right in. All right. So, um, so yeah, we invited, as we talked about, well, I guess last week, right, we're, we're getting pretty close to having uh, the, the revisions to the plan. And, and I'll just do, you know, as this is being recorded and others might be watching on YouTube, obviously over the last number of months as a committee, uh, we held a couple of public forums, a forum with a workshop with council, received a lot of input. This committee put a lot of time and energy into um, some final revisions to the plan. As part of the process through the fall and winter, one of the things that was identified, particularly coming out of council, uh, was an interest to really have a, a, a copy edit, if you will, of the comp plan, because as we all have talked about, it felt like there were many authors. And the reason for that was because there were many authors. <laughs> um, so uh, really, uh, we, we've brought in um, uh, GP Cog and their staff, Vanessa Farr, uh, who will uh, take over here in just a minute, um, worked with Christina Egan to, to try to give us a a final polish of the plan. Um, and so she'll sort of go over that work. Um, so Vanessa, I, I don't know if we want to do a round of introductions or you can see everyone's name and we can just sort of go from there. Um, but I think that is what I had for way of introduction this morning. It's really, again, well, maybe just final, just to say that, again, this morning is just about hearing from Vanessa the type of work that they've done, understanding that we gave you the maybe 90% completed comp plan earlier in the week or just a couple of days ago. I'm sure you all haven't had a chance to read through it fully, um, which is completely understanding. So this is really about helping you understand what it is you're gonna see <laughs> as you read through the revised plan. And again, you know, as I said, at this point, really the work has been around copy editing, red flagging some areas that we might want to be mindful of with regards to uh, consistency with the state. I know they helped uh, include some additional materials there, um, but none of the policy objectives or really the direction of the plan has changed in any, any meaningful way. That's really the work that the committee had done previously. So with that, I'll um, turn it. Uh, Dave, do you want it back or should we just kick it right over to Vanessa? No, that's, uh, that's good. No, good summary. Thank you. Um, I would just, I guess, if there are questions along the way, should we hold them or should we raise our hand and um, try to intercede or any preference? I think you should ask me as we go because yeah. we're going to scroll through the document. Gotcha. Okay. That's okay with Jay. Is that good? Yeah. Great. Are, and Vanessa, are you able to share your screen at this point? Uh, you are. There, yeah. there we go. So I just need to make you all disappear to the side, which is always hard because then I can't see if you're frowning or smiling. <laughs> but I'm, everyone's gonna be smiling today, I think. Um, so I'm gonna just show you the document in the PDF. So we, we really went through the document, um, as Jay mentioned, with an eye to, to smooth out some edges to make the language flow better, to try and um, have some awkward phrasing adjusted. Um, and there's absolutely no changes to policy. Policy direction, what the town is on the hook for, what you're saying you will or won't do. So I absolutely want to make sure that you are fully like nodding heads. Uh, there's no changes to policy. I haven't slipped anything in here. Uh, I've been doing comprehensive planning for about 25 years. And um, at this point in a process, I think it's you know, important on my end when I'm picking this up and I'm joining your group at such a late stage um, to be re very respectful of what you've done to date. And so I would commend you for all of your hard work. And so really, you know, my job and Christina's job was just to polish this thing up. Um, we also flagged a couple of areas where we thought that some information was missing and it's very simple information. It was not adding in any new policies or action statements 
or um, you know, directives for the town to do, but simply the background data that the state is looking for when they're going through the review for compliance. And so we'll touch on a little bit of that. It was mostly mapping um, and some references to um, uh, land that was in agriculture or open space programs. Peter. Vanessa, hi. Um, yes. Actually, that was one question. I, you, I'm, I'm sure you've gone through um, dozens, if not hundreds of these. Were there any gaps relative to what the state's expectations would be or relative, relative to the statute from the state? Yeah, not, a, not big ones, just, uh, and what's interesting, it's, you know, it's, there were a couple of things missing that honestly have been missing out of plans I've written. So, you know, the state, for example, produces these very beautiful complex beginning with habitat data maps and that data lives in one department. It doesn't always transfer over to the main office of GIS. So um, consultants may or may not pick up on that or they may use what they think is better data. Um, so what we did is we had someone in our office recreate and insert in those beginning with habitat data maps. And it was only a few hours of extra time, but I know that there's somebody up there with a spreadsheet and they're doing this. They're checking things off. And if they don't see the words beginning with habitat, they'll put not, uh, not completed, not submitted, and you know, send the plan back to you. Got it. So I hope that helps to answer that question. It does. Good. Um, yeah, so departments really, they're, you know, they're a little turfy. They want to see that their information is being inserted into your plan. That's just been my experience. So this will be a little awkward. I'm going to scroll. You can turn your eyes away, and I can tell you when to come back if you want. Um, the first real, and I'm only going to go through about, you know, six or eight high level changes here. Um, and then you'll have some time to spend with the document. Again, you won't see any policy changes. What you will see is that pages will start to look a little different in their layout, only in some places where, you know, we have really cleaned up and removed some redundancies in language and just provided a, a tighter, tighter kind of narrative. So this first section, and it's in the first probably 12 pages, which is the, you know, what is this plan? What's it about? Why are we doing it? We really cleaned up this language. And just to give you a sense of this, and I won't show you the, the red line document as we go through the whole process today, but just to, just to get a sense of the kinds of cleaning up that we did to the language. So this is probably one of the messiest pages, but we felt like when a reader is picking up this document, it's the first place they're gonna go to. So we've really cleaned things up, removed some redundancies, and I think it, it reads as a, a nice snappy introduction. So if you're going to really kind of get into the how's the language changed, this is probably the first 12 pages is where you'll find that. So there was a lot of, just a lot of kind of repetitive language in here. I think this is definitely one of those places where it felt like there were six authors to the plan. And this is moving into the how to use the plan. So that's the first section. Um, then we're gonna move down into page 46. So again, maybe avert your eyes for a moment. Don, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, I had a quick question. And this might be getting off in the weeds a little bit, but okay. the red line looked great. How did you, how did you do that? I mean, I, I struggle with PDF <laughs> editing PDF. So yeah. Kind of, you know, well, process question. So the red lines. This is this is Christina um, bringing the PDF into a um, a reader app, and she uses an Apple iPen, and then she writes on top of it. I can nice. tell you from my production end, this is not uh, easy <laughs> because once once documents have been moved into InDesign, the layout, you know, it just it's really difficult to go in and start parsing sentences. So. This works really well for a simple amount of editing. Uh, and actually it's quite brilliant. Um, but once it's in InDesign, uh, it's not always most work efficient. Well, I think it's great. Uh, and I, I'm really pleased you showed that to give us an idea of how much, you know, how much detail you really went through in reviewing it. Yeah. Uh, so, so thanks for that. But I, I, I have to say, I struggled mightily going back and forth between PDF and, uh, and Word in a red line. I've done a lot in Word and it's just, it's murder. Word is very difficult doing the track changes. And 
So what we ask for from our clients often, we would rather see you mark up a paper copy and give us a paper copy. Great. Because Word is just, it, it's not a very friendly place to do group editing. Yeah. Thank you. That's good for future reference. So get the red pen out. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but only if you're going to make about a, less than 100 marks. And then you really need to be in some other program, like maybe in Google. Not today. Not today. No. And uh, you know what? You're not getting a red pen for this document. <laughs> you guys are like there. You're so there. It's time to like kick this thing out into the world. Um, yeah, you've done a really good job. And I think, you know, this is a 12 year document. So I think we need to be mindful that you're, you know, you're, you're so many, you're a couple of years into it. So thank uh, you. That's right. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. We're still scrolling. Don't look at like, don't look at the screen, it'll make you dizzy. <laughs> it's making me dizzy. Uh, we're going to page 46. Um, so this section in the demographics, we did add some information. There was some affordable housing information missing. Um, a table will get popped in with some adjustment. Just the, there was a word missing from this table. So that's a quick and simple little drop in. But um, because we did add some affordability language, we did have to, to spend some time reworking this section of the document. So nothing substantial is changing. It's just data background. And if you're looking at an old copy to a new copy, you'll see page layout is a little different. And Vanessa, I'm just going to yeah. jump in um, just mm -hmm. as a reminder for the committee. So if you'll recall the work we did over the winter, right? Uh, Karen and I, based on our conversation, we're sort of doing very clunky uh, edit copies that we were sharing back and forth. And we had a local person um, doing some InDesign work for us, sort of doing the, um, making, <laughs> making our messy work fit into this document using this software. Um, and so Vanessa is actually currently coordinating um, with our local InDesign person on yeah. some final edits. So on that page 46, you might have saw at the top said insert table here. That's the, there, there's still that sort of cleanup stuff. I think the document you have now is, is good to really start reading through. Um, but we do still have a, that final polish that's happening. And I was able to hear back um, uh, from Bert and she, um, doing, she's working on that. We may have it, um, anticipate having it very soon. So um, just to give you sort of a heads up on, there is still that ongoing work. And in this document, like I said, you'll see where it says insert or, you know. Yeah, you're at 99% to correct Jay from earlier. <laughs> You know, 99, last, I like it. <laughs> yeah, her last little bits are not complicated. So again, just to show you, this is very simple reworking of language, um, editing, but you know, there's, there just, there needed to be some flow. And this is a section of the document where like, you know, it would be really helpful to have headers in here and to help move people through this language. Um, so that's, and a lot of pages, so this is what the new layout looks like. Just adding headers, cleaning up language. You know, we saw a lot of use of we and our, and we took that kind of language out and kind of neutralized it a little bit. Um, and so those headers, um, there's new maps inserted on page 64. So we're coming up on those. So these are the new, and I apologize that you're seeing it in a single page spread, but it's easier on the screen. So we did find that the beginning with habitat data was missing as well as the facts about egg and tree growth. And so those numbers have been inserted and referenced to the state's database. Um, and that will help to check off a box with the IFNW department. They'll want to see these maps. So um, Abe Daly produced them to be, you know, to look like the other maps that were in your document. And so there's riparian habitats and then rare, threatened, endangered, and essential. And Bert, the graphic designer, you know, might kind of move these around a tiny little bit. Um, you know, that's, but it's literally a 30 second adjustment for her to make. So let's see. Actually, quick question on that, Vanessa. Yeah. Do we need to add any, um, or do we need to consider any um, narrative to be added to that section on, on habitat? You have a lot of narrative already in here. Okay. I would wait and see. Got it. I would wait and see. 
And if so, you know, there will be white page, white space. But I think that, I don't think right now I would worry about it because you do talk about water supply. You do talk about the marshes. Um, so I think for now, go with this. Yeah, the state's not expecting a specific call out or a specific description or or or, or citation on on the maps or anything like that. Is, I guess is where I'm. You mean like no? They know that this is their data. Got it. So, okay. And then I added this little note here. It said that we use the data set. Got it. Okay. Um, but this, they're they're really wonky up there. So you never know. <laughs> you just never know what they're gonna say. Um, Okay. Yeah, so I guess, yeah. Vanessa, I might just jump in on, on that. So, um, you know, Vanessa, you know, has, has done this more recently than I have, but it sounds like the state, um, what used to be the state planning office many years ago, but is really starting to get staffed up again. <laughs> and so there, now that um, there's more eyes, more staff, um, I think we, we, sh we are likely to expect to get some comments back from the state. The state doesn't do a review until you adopt. So I just want us to be prepared that, you know, let's go through, let's, let's be comfortable with it locally and understand that the state is probably going to say, hey, you're missing X, Y, or Z, or we're looking for X, Y, or Z, and then we'll just have to handle that uh, accordingly, which might just be, a, an, you know, an amendment process or, or what have you. But um, that's it's fairly typical um, of the process. Don. Hey, Don. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Quick point there. Uh, I think it's going to be very important for us to uh, set expectations for uh, the public, you know, and the council, so that when it gets handed over to the council, you know, if, if and when it comes back with that, it's from the state. I don't want people to draw the wrong conclusions. Yeah. Uh, so just to you know, a note. Yeah, and, and one thing that would be very helpful uh, to do when when you're sending the plan. So the last plan that we worked with. Uh, the state on was Topsum. And the reviewer really, it felt like to me that the reviewer had just missed whole sections of the plan. So what we did is we took the state data checklist, which I think Jay has been working on with Karen, and we actually noted where to find everything. And you know, me having been the author of that plan, it was really easy for me to be able to say, I know that's in here, let's find it and do a command F search for it and then just actually put the page numbers down in the spreadsheet and then send it back. And once we did that, and that was very time consuming, it's also very frustrating because that checklist is not a mandatory checklist. It's a, a self-assessment that you can volunteer yourself to do. But the fact is, is the state staff are still using it and yet they're not always reading carefully through your plan. So they're relying on something that is not mandatory in order to check for compliance. So it will take your staff probably a good solid day to work through and document that checklist. Um, Great. Just it's to good to know you have the answer key and you're gonna be working that into the process before we send it. So that's, that's great. Okay, so the next is the use of the term character. And um, at this point, what I've done is if there's a reference to rural character, I left it. If it was a, a use of the word character to describe a, a place, I switched it to characteristics. In some places it was appropriate to use the word identity. In another place it was appropriate to use the word aesthetic. So I've really gone through, and at this point, um, the only real reference to rural or to character in terms of place is with rural character. Um, and um, you'll notice that if you're, you know, it's not as easy if you're doing paper copy review, but if you do a command F search for the term character, you'll be able to see the only places left where that, that, that expression is being used. Um, let's see. Next one. Make a comment on 67. I, I think it's probably an old draft, but we still have a couple pictures from far away, away. Um, in here? Yeah. These are pictures you asked for to be removed. Yeah. Yeah, the bottom right corner looks like Utah. Yeah. <laughs> it's daybreak. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Jay, do you have additional photos that you can provide for Bert? What section is this? 
Yeah, we'll work. We'll work with uh, with Bert yeah. on that one. Yep. I think. Yeah, I can see why you would want different pictures here. Yep. Okay. Um, hmm. Let me see. So you're gonna make a note. Do you want me to drop little note ca cards on here or no? Not at this point. I've got unless okay. yeah. Well, yeah. So you'll do. You'll have Bert do that. Yep. Yep. We've got that one. Thank you. Okay. So let's close the comments. All right, so now we're moving to page 101. I'm scrolling, avert your eyes. <laughs> I'll tell you when to look. Oh, your new map is going in. You can look. Um, you have a new pa parks in um, this map here. This one will be swapped out. Bert is going to do that. She's also going to check because she has to get the document ready for printing to make sure that all the, the bounds of the document and the maps that once it's printed, that you'll be able to see all the information. It really has to do with these inside columns. And just as a reminder, the reason that one's getting replaced is uh, the land trust identified that there was an additional area that they had picked up uh, in the last couple of years. So we're adding that. Yep. We also have data, Bert's making a stylized table to insert the marine licenses. And so this is the documenting of shellfish, and commercial fishing. That is something that the state will look for as well. Again, more background data. Um, and it would have been nice in some ways to just be able to put this stuff in an appendices, but um, there's we reworked the layout and you don't have an appendices for anything else. So it'll just get embedded in this section. It's part of why your page numbers are off. Okay, now we are going to the map I promised we were going to, which is in the plan framework. So we did rework some of this language just to clean it up and simplify uh, and just, again, smoothing edges, making it sound like it flows just better. And nothing has changed in the strategies. There's no, no wordsmithing in strategies. This section, again, like the very beginning of the plan, we did spend a good amount of time redlining this and Kind of simplifying. I think it um, it reads much better. There's a bunch of redundancies in here, and the thing that I think to point out here is that you know we're actually using the term designated growth area. I don't think that was used in the draft before, or if it was, it wasn't as explicit to say right down here the identified growth and limited growth areas serve to meet the state requirements for establishing a designated growth area. So that's again, like, let's check off a box and make sure that the reviewer understands that this map is your future land use map. Vanessa, yeah. um, we've had a number of public comments um, where there, I think, has been some confusion about the meaning of growth and limited growth mm -hmm. um, among members of the public, where growth doesn't necessarily mean we're going to infill and have a ton of targeted population growth in a given area. It right. may relate more to infrastructure investment or yep. infrastructure maintenance. Um, is it possible to add some additional clarifying comments here? Maybe something you've seen in other documents or, 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 or other places, which make that more explicit and allows the public to understand that growth with a capital G doesn't mean growth with a lowercase g and a lot more people, I guess. Yeah. That narrative is in here. Sure. So I guess I would ask you the question, um, are you planning to do a, oh, Jay has an answer. Go for it. Yeah, I guess I was going to say, Peter, to, to me, this was one of the pages that I jumped to because I knew for me, this is one of the pages that felt clunky because we spent so much time as a community focused on this issue that we were so close to it. It had everything we wanted, and <laughs> but it just, I could never pull away <laughs> to simplify the language. And that's why when I saw what Vanessa rewrote, I said, oh, cool, everything's in here. And it says it in half the number of words, <laughs> you know, where, where I think we all, you know, we all had our fingerprints on it and it, it's hard to sort of let go of that stuff sometimes. So to me, this was one of those areas like at back at the beginning where we had spent so much focused energy on that every word had so much meaning for all of us. Um, 
including myself as you know have rewritten it a number of times that where it's really helpful to have that fresh set of eyes who can look at it and say okay i get what you're trying to say but dear god <laughs> how are you saying this and so you know i I, just, you know, to, to your question, that was the first thing I looked for. I was like, okay, did they keep this whole notion of that a growth area doesn't necessarily mean growth of population. It means investment. And I was like, oh, good, that's in here. So they, um, that, that's what I saw in it anyway. Um, I, I've just, obviously, Jay, you've been on doing this for a long time. And even in the, the six months I've been on here, I've just seen that sensitivity point as a raw nerve for, um, for a number of folks. And, um, and I know they're going to go to this page. Um, so I just want to make, and, and uh, so we'll definitely take a, a deep dive onto this page and make sure that, that we're all comfortable with it. But uh, it, the, the conversation is helpful. Um, thank you very much. Yeah. And just to walk through, there's a lot of reorganizing. So, you know, first paragraph now says that this is the graphic illustration. Um, so, you know, what is this map? Um, and that it guides revisions to zoning um, it, or it does organization. So I think definitely spend a little time here. I do think you are being explicit in the document. I've seen it, read it. Um, but you know, if you were thinking about, you know, the rollout of the plan, there may be a four pager that you decide to produce. Um, I don't know how it moves forward. Um, how you're thinking about communications for your plan, but um, that might be something that you create or think about creating. Um, because I, I think that the plan, it's really, you know, it's dense. It does have a lot of data in here. Um, Topsum had a good success in, they worked actually with us to, well, not us, me before I went to GPCOG, um, to create a four page layout that was printed in the local newspaper as a special. And then that was delivered to Topsom residents. It had the land use map, it had the high level strategies, background of how the plan was created and then what you can do if you wanna get involved. Um, and that, that educational piece really helped to turn out voters when it came time to adopt the plan. They had about 250 people show up to town meeting uh, to vote for their plan. And that was a, a pretty high number when there was nothing, you know, dramatic on the, the, the warrant besides, uh, you know, there's no school votes or anything else that was happening that evening. So. Nessa, uh, could, you, could you get us a copy of that so we can see what, uh, what they did? And that might be very helpful. Yeah, I think, our own. yeah, I, I think I have a copy. I think I've seen it recently. I know that there's, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think, I was cleaning out my studio not too long ago and found an extra copy. So yes. I have a question on page 101. It's more of a comment. And um, I know that, I, I mean, there are large changes there. Uh, um, uh, uh, sent, um, the third paragraph, uh, a dense sentence was removed that I noticed as I went through uh, old copy to new copy. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is my one comment in the, uh, I think this, uh, for this meeting, and I'm, I'm just going to bore you senseless and read this sentence. And I'd like your understanding and your uh, point of view on the removal of it. I'm sure it's clunky and fit into some enormous view, but if you'll indulge me this one time. Uh, the sentence that was removed in the third paragraph is, the assignment of areas provides a framework that addresses the concerns related to preserving community character, obviously I understand that, uh, community characteristics, let's say, and to more effectively help Scarborough increase both its economic potential and quality of life goals. So uh, that was just lifted and removed. And uh, I'm not, I'm the furthest from an expert in this field, but uh, can you give me some insight into uh, why? So I think it had been said multiple times already. And I actually need to go back to my 
where I edited the document. Now I need to make this toolbar go away. So what page were we just on, 101? 101, third paragraph. Okay. Sort of right in the middle of it. Uh, and it's obvious, you know, there you go. Oh, and in the old, yeah, in the old document, it's page 99, pardon me. Okay, thanks. Third, third paragraph. 98, oh, there we go. Yeah, there it is, just, it struck. Repetitive, see below first paragraph. Thank you. So that was why. That, this is a section where I just found it was like cut and paste, cut and paste. Um, no real coherent flow of what this was about. So um, this was, the red is Christina's first pass. And then I went even deeper because it was so clunky. Um, well, that, yeah, and I, I thought- page lead for the section because it's the most distilled version of you know what what the map actually is and to me that's the type of thing that gets back to what i was saying before is, you know as we were so close to it we knew we wanted to make certain points <laughs> we just kept making them and making them and making them even if they were on the same page and and again that's to me that was the benefit of the fresh eyes to sort of say yeah you you said that and as a fresh reader, I already ha understand that. So to me, I, I found that to be, um, as I was saying before, I think the real benefit that we um, are seeing here is helping us to zoom out and just say, say what we mean to say um, without beating it over and over again, as it, because it was, as you, you pointed out, Marvin, something that this committee spoke quite a bit about. So we felt, okay, <laughs> we need to say it multiple times, but really. Um, uh, point so, taken, again. point taken, thank you. Yeah, and so this is, this is that language that you were asking about just before this, which is, um, you know, desi designated growth doesn't mean that we're going to transform and, you know, evolve into something that's super like bigger. We're not upzoning necessarily, but what it is is saying is that you can make future investments to that area. So within some areas, there may be, within some, there may be areas that are already built out and cannot accommodate further growth. However, there may still be an opportunity for public infrastructure investments. Each area is unique and future decisions will continue to recognize those values. So that's, that, that's the statement that helps to back up. Now, I really see this as being about the Growth Management Act and saying, you know, your GMA and the state is looking for you to say, we're only going to, going to invest in a compact sort of place. We're not going to invest to all the edges of town. And I think that this is, this is really checking off that box for them. Don? I like the way you've captured it here uh, at a high level using the terms conservation and growth uh, and activity areas. So those are, you know, those are terms I think that are important. But in other areas, I also think that they're, you know, it's ref we refer to competing demands or competing interests. Uh, we talk about environment, we talk about commercial activity, we, we talk about uh, mm -hmm. recreational impact. So. So it's, and, and, you know, and ultimately residential falls in there someplace. So it, just at some point, it's, I think it's going to be important for us to kind of uh, follow through the, you know, the, the level at which we're talking about, but I really like the way this is, is worded. And, um, you know, I think you really captured it well, but we do talk about those other dimensions and those other factors in various places. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One, one more question, if I may. And Vanessa, I think you were just pointing out the uh, very specific area uh, uh, where uh, what I was asking about was addressed. And what you're look the PDF you're looking through looks to be different than the one uh, one that I have in its in its uh, in its format. And it, I'm sure it's probably me, but. Uh, you, what we're looking at right now on your screen is the current PDF. Jay, did Bert do any changes after I sent it to you? 
No, I believe you guys should have the, this is the one that we sent, I forwarded you all the link to. Um, okay, pardon me. I'm just getting confused as far as which one I'm looking at. Thank you. Yeah, a, a really good trick, and this is um, something I use, I have to remind myself to use my archive folder because uh, there's always so many drafts coming. Um, I would suggest when you're done looking at this one, um, unless you made, you know, we might make notes on a piece of paper with page references at this point and put this into an archive folder because Bert will be sending you another PDF relatively soon would be my expectation. Okay, so map organizing, I think I'm gonna just shrink this down a little bit. And so a new map is gonna go in here with just some minor tweaks. Uh, again, I think the, the fresh eyes, when Christina was going through this, she's like, well, what do these circle dashes mean? What are, you know, she, she's picking this up, not knowing, you know, maybe perhaps what the name of this neighborhood is or this area, everyone knows what this is. Uh, but she suggested perhaps these could be identified you know, what is the blue dot dash, uh, you know, that's not in the legend. So those are some tweaks. They're simple tweaks to make um, and Bert will handle those. The file, I couldn't do that because it was uh, the way that this, this comes from another program, this map. So she'll, she'll do that change in Illustrator and then produce a new map to go in here. But nothing, nothing really big. Uh, this area, we did clean up some of the language. We made sure that the references to sectors was removed and you know, consistently using the word area or areas. Hey, Vanessa, real quick, yep. back mm -hmm. to the map there. Yep. Um, I'm glad you to see that there's gonna be some more labeling there. I think that's good. Um, and I say this very personally, has anyone done a colorblindness check on this map? Um, because that's I'm colorblind great. and this one would became almost illegible for me to identify right. different areas. Yeah, um, I think that's a great, uh, great point to bring up. I don't hear very well, so Zoom sometimes has been a problem for me lately. Um, and I also don't see very well either. But yes, so we didn't, you know, if we were making this map for you today, we're just wrapping up um, protocols for colorblindness in internal for our department. Uh, but this hasn't been checked for colorblindness. Got and it. I think that if that is something that you want to do, recognize that someone will have to remake this map from, like, I think that Bert, I'm not sure if she can do a bit simple adjustment. Jay? Yeah, yeah I, I guess what, what I would say on that, on that front, Peter, um, that's, that, you know, I think that's a, a really good point, but I think that's something that can be done outside of the comp plan, right? Uh, as Vanessa just said, we have a GIS coordinator on staff who could rebuild this map and then, you know, if we can okay. figure out sort of what colors, how better to represent it for those who, who do have, you know, who are colorblind. Um, Cause yeah, there's obviously there's the layers. We have sort of these fuzzy blurry lines. We have the regional uh, uh, circles. So um, we could sort of perhaps do that outside of the plan um, and have it accompany the plan on the website. So those who are, are reading through trouble seeing, Say, all right, take a look over here. So yeah, labeling helps a lot, I'll say. So I yeah. think the labeling is going to make a big difference. That's that's terrific. Um, and I don't want to propose at this stage that we re-engineer a map for 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 my chromosomal deficiencies. Um, but uh, um, but, but yeah, it, maybe it's, <laughs> maybe it's it's a it's a thought for the for for the future. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, I just yeah, it, uh, uh, I'll, I'll I'll leave it at that. Yeah, I think that's a good point, Jay. It would be worth asking her if if it is, if she can really easily do it or not. I don't know how, you know, the parent file probably is Illustrator. So it might be easy for her to do where she's just uh, taking the legend because there's discrepancy between the legend and the map as well. You know, the saturation is a little off. So I don't know if it's as easy as her using like the, there's like a paint tool that you, you know, you just kind of like, it's like an eyedropper, you pick up the color and drop it. So maybe check with her and get an idea of, you know, is it an hour? Is it 30 minutes? Is it 20 minutes? Um, but that's a good point. Okay, so Matt, tweaks. Um, 
marine text was added. And I think that's it for high level changes. You know, again, you can see from the color, the red lining, we've really gone through and done a clean, nice copy edit. Um, but again, no policy changes. We didn't add anything for you to do, uh, any more actions than you've already sort of identified for yourselves as a town. Um, the very, very last step, I think, is going to be um, checking page references. So once you're done, at this point, I would say try not to add anything else <laughs> because it affects the layout um, and the pages and the page numbering. Um, but that will be a very, very last step besides, of course, spell check. Um, to go through and renumber the action plan matrix at the end. So all the page numbers are consistent. Um, so does anyone have questions? Alan. You're muted. I got to say that this morning. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Um, I really love the redlining and in a past life before I retired, I did programming uh, along with some other things. And one of the most important things when you're doing programming or reprogramming, if you will, is to leave yourself a note trail. Mm -hmm. And I see that you have done that in terms of why you've made some of the changes that you've done. And that is great. So thank you. My real question is, does and will the town have access to the red line with your notes in it so that if a question comes up as to why something occurred, uh, much like Marvin's question earlier, Jay or somebody in the town will have the ability to be able to say, this is why that change was made. Yes, so I think you already have it. Um, we provided well, actually, the very final one, I can provide this, this folder, so, or sorry, this uh, document. But you're, that's absolutely a good point. And once it's turned over to the town, you know, it just like everything else is public record. But yep, so you can see all of my comments in the comments back and forth between staff. And then every time something was completed, there's a little green check mark. Yeah, so that's, that's, yeah. a, that's a great process. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, see, Alan, just... As Vanessa just said, that was part of what we went through. Um, you know, Vanessa sent to Karen and I sort of all these tags and we went through and I think on one of the pages you could see our response was, yep, let's let's yeah. change the name of this thing to, to this other thing that makes more sense. So okay. we do have that document um, sort of will be in our archive folder as Vanessa just talked about. Sweet. Yep. Don? Yeah, thanks. I, I, this, these are really good points. Uh, I just wanted to suggest that it'd be very important for us to be clear about, you know, how many different groups reviewed reviewed this and that it represents, you know, building on the original work and then, you know, talking through the process steps here, you know, to make sure everybody gets credit, you know, who participated in this. And that on the one hand, and on the other hand, to make sure that it's not, well, the, this is the long range planning committee's version. So I think it would be important to point that out behind it. Um, but I also have a question about there are still some stuff. There's, you know, for, for example, on the first page, there's some errors with committees and stuff like that. There's still some content things that need to be changed. So my question is really for, for you and Jay, you know, when, when so, will this take place? So this page still has errors on it? Well, I mean, if you go to the, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, it's, there's committees, there's, uh, I don't, and there's their error with titles on committees and uh, oh, I'm not sorry. so and there are other I've noticed also a couple of yeah so for example uh, you know long range you know this is this a lot of this just stuff stuff just happened I mean, for long range planning committee we have you know this needs to be corrected I'm not an alternate I'm a liaison um, you know that sort of thing uh, Robin Saunders is back on the committee now as a full voting member That's so these right. things just happened. Um, but, you know, it, I think would be important to capture stuff like that um, not to make a big deal over the fact that I found uh, something that needed to be updated on the first page. So, you know. yeah, no, thank I. Yeah, Robin was just appointed a week or two ago. So thank you for reminding me of that one. And I, I guess, Don, I, I did ask for the alternate hook on your name because I understood that 
Jean Marie is the, at least that's the way it's listed on the website that yeah. you are the alternate liaison, but we're, right. you know, we're, right. we're now. Dead, that's so. fine. That's fine. Um, yeah, I'm absolutely good with that. And then, uh, so, but there are other things like that. I want to make sure we get, we get uh, a chance to sweep it one more time. And I, I, I fully expect once we review it, uh, you know, with the town council, we have the public reading it. Uh, I'm sure we're going to hear feedback then. So uh, the final question is, so what's the what's the loop for that? And we want people to say, well, thanks very much, but this is, uh, you know, uh, on the way to the public publishing house, or you know, there's still a chance. And we we heard that the state will, will come back, and there are ultimately provisions as a very final step. So it's, it's all for me about setting expectations. Mm -hmm. I guess I would say optimistically, if there's a good defense for the things that are in there, I hope we can keep the uh, the you know the edits to a minimum. Um, yeah, down the road. Yeah, know? absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, at some point we've talked about this before, and this has been this is an inherent challenge in this sort of thing. It's been a moving target. At some point, you know, the it has to just sort of be pencils down. I mean, I, I we'll get comments you know, a month after it's submitted that, oh, you know, this person changed on that committee um, or some other fact changed. But um, I think at some point we just have to sort of lock it, lock it in. Yep. But I, I I'll, while I have the floor, I'll just say, I'll just echo what others have said that um, really appreciate the edits and um, having been involved with this from the, from the beginning and seeing how it's evolved. Um, it's really reassuring to me at a basic level to feel like this is something that's going to really flow um, and, and really be readable. So thank you. So as I said, sort of at the outset, or maybe I didn't say it during the meeting, um, but I certainly said it in the email, um, you know, really no expectation for any action by the committee today, certainly. Um, and um, as was already referenced, hopefully we'll hear back. Bert's got some final uh, edits to do. Um, and so hopefully we'll see those in short order um, and we can then start to think about, um, yes, as Don just said, sort of that final review and, um, and the final committee work before we do issue this out of committee and, and to council. Um, and the expectation at this point, as Tom Hall had referenced at a recent council meeting is that you know this will be before council um, in the month of June. Um, of course, you all need to do your work and, and, and you know, make your recommendations. So that's up ultimately um, going to be at, at your feet, but hopeful um, in, in the next few weeks here, we'll be satisfied with the document as we've been working on. Do you guys want to see really quickly, um, 30 seconds, what that town crier ad looked like for the Topsim? Did sure. we show it to you? Yeah. Right. Can you see it on my screen? Yep. Yeah. So we put, the, put together a citizen's guide that really had sort of like a welcome letter, an introduction to the plan. This was a placeholder for maps, so this must not have been the final draft. <laughs> Sorry. Um, basically what the, what the plan was including the map, I don't think this would pass the colorblind tech, uh, test either at this point. I think it's great that we're becoming more aware of how we need to adapt. Um, but this was really their piece that they printed, four pages that helped to just sort of like say, here it is, here's where you can go get more information. And then of course, come out to vote. So I thought I would just show that to you. And I have too many things on my screen. So the town actually votes on the t on the Topsom plan. As there they did. Yep. Yeah. Why can't I get you back on my screen? So they're a town they're meeting right. form of government. They don't have yeah. town council. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So it was important that you know that and that process you know very similar to yours had a you know a big public design charrette. Um, you know I think start to finish it was shorter than eighteen months. So, um, but it was um, it was sort of a way to to kind of loop people back in, even though, you know, we were keeping people informed as the, the plan was being developed, but um, this was sort of like the first 
piece of information besides the plan that was sort of like the marketing piece that was distilled down uh, that they got to see. So. Marvin? I, I have uh, a newish member question and that is, is there a time between now and the uh, and when the council receives this that the town's attorney reviews it? Does that happen and when does it happen, please? Um, yeah, probably uh, wasn't necessarily anticipating having the town attorney review this. Um, again, there's a, a state level review that it goes through and the state determines if it's consistent. So we're going through the checklist. Um, you know, I've been involved with a couple of comp plan adoption processes, Vanessa and, and GP COG staff has. So I guess not really sure at this point we need to spend the attorney hourly rate to have them read 200 pages. Um, but certainly we do keep our, you know, every time we change anything in the ordinance or do adopt this, we'll certainly provide that, you know, say, hey, you know, just so you know, we've, <laughs> so they're aware of what's going on, um, but wasn't necessarily going to have uh, the attorney do a, a read through. Um, certainly if the town manager or council wishes that to happen, we can do that, but that wouldn't be my recommendation. Um, and may I ask, Jay, thanks very much. Uh, Vanessa, how about uh, GP COG? Do they have any recommendation that way? I don't know what GP COG's position would be about having attorneys review comprehensive plans, but I can say from my experience of 25 years, we've never sent a comp plan to an attorney before adoption. The zoning is the piece where you really need to focus your resources. So if you're going to make an adjustment to zoning, uh, that's where attorneys sometimes get involved even, not always. It just sort of depends on what, how big of a change you're gonna make. If you're eliminating parking requirements, you're not gonna send that to an attorney. But if you're up zoning or taking away development rights, mostly it's when you take away development rights that you may decide you're going to get an attorney involved. Um, but no, it's not typical to send a comp plan to an attorney. That's very helpful to me. Thank you. You have a question? No, I just had a comment. Uh, this is a very different uh, Don, piece. Did you? Yeah, I, I had a quick uh, comment. I uh, Before we wrap up here, I just wanted to say that I, uh, you know, I've, I've been reading, like this group, you know, we've been reading this at many stages along the way. This is a... Um, a vastly improved document in terms of the look and feel, uh, how tight it is, the flow, uh, the, the single voice. There are just so many things in there that are good. And, and not to mention that all of the other things that you've added that uh, from GP Cox uh, in terms of, you know, squaring this with uh, how the state looks at it and doing a first pass, uh, you know, before they even see it to make sure that we're going to be checking all the boxes. So I, I, I think that the the work here and the many hands that have touched it really shows in a very positive way. And I think that as we go through the approval process ultimately and, and adopt it, uh, that it'll be, you know, I think that we'll hear uh, hopefully growing support and enthusiasm for it. Great, I think just as a note of, not to say a note of caution, but in the expectation setting, you know, I didn't use the checklist to go through every point so I think that Jay, if you, if you guys do go through it and you find that something is missing, then we can talk about how to get that in there. Um, the one thing that I've seen happen, I do, and there's some, some areas that get people get nitpicky about at the state, but I, and I did notice that your plan includes them. It's you know comments about street connectivity. Well, the Growth Management Act is t probably 20 years old at this point. So early 2000s, well, it's almost 20 years. Um, so the trends and things happening in the early 2000s were really what uh, state planners were thinking about as they created Growth Management Act. But you've been through already a plan in the early 2000s and you adopted changes and now we're in 2021. Um, sometimes if you, you know, something that the state is looking for you to embed, you may have already done it in your policies like street connectivity. And if the plan happens to be silent on this aspect, the state will flag it and say, well, you're not addressing this. And then 
for on your side, you'll say, well, we did that in 2006 or 2008 or 2010. You know, there's no consistency on their end. And um, I guess, what would you call that? The, not history, but the, oh, what's the term? Institutional I'm knowledge. There you go. That's it. There's no institutional knowledge being held on to up there. So, um, so I think just to be very clear, you know, we didn't go through every single line in the checklist. It's like 170 of them. Um, and I do think they will come back and probably say something's missing because that's just what they like to do. But um, it's not a complicated process to add something. Um, and then, you know, and things like even your map, if you decide you want to switch out your map, that's just a format change. It doesn't require sending your plan back through an adoption process. So I hope that's helpful. A state level adoption process. <laughs> we have our own local adoption process. Right. And even with your local, if all you did is switch your colors on your map, you don't have to re adopt your, <clears throat> your plan. This has been very helpful. Um, it does look so very much improved. I uh, particularly want to give a shout out to the habitat maps on page 65. And uh, Thank you. Uh, thank you for arranging this and thank you, Vanessa, for joining us. You're welcome. I'm here to help if you need any additional assistance. Um, I'm available. Sure. Yeah, did you? Yeah. Steve, I guess at this point, um, it's a question partially for Jay and partially for you. It sounds like, Jay, the document that you sent out with Dropbox um, is good for us to review and do our full review on now the additional changes you said Bert was going to come through are, are are minor and shouldn't hold up our examination of the document. And so Dave and Jay, should we expect next week will be the substantive read through of that document or what's the timing um, expectations now going forward? So Dave, I'll, if you don't, um, I, Let's, so our last item on the agenda is to schedule our next meeting. So maybe we can talk about that and just put a pin in that for just right now, Peter, if you don't mind. Um, That's fine, Jay. Yeah, sure. Um, I, that is something I wanted to talk to the committee about is how long, how much soap time do you want with this before we meet again? Do we want to think about next Friday or do we want to think about perhaps the next week, but then thinking that's the Friday before Memorial Day weekend and, um, maybe we think about a different day of the week. So anyway, we can talk about that in a minute. Um, nope, that's fine. Um, like I said, it, it sounded like we were getting ready to move to that, so that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Ex excellent work, Vanessa. I appreciate the, the, the far, far away view. We've all been myopic in this for the last year and a half, two years, and uh, can't see the forest through the trees here. So it's appreciative to have a, 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 your expertise and weigh in on this and the grammar and everything from substance to technicality. So Thank very, you. very appreciative. Thank you. Yeah, good work, you guys. I mean, it's, it's a big effort to do a comp plan. It really, you know, I think we put a lot of burden, we as in the state puts a lot of burden on the towns to do work, you know, 18 to two year, 18 months to two years for a 10 to 12 year plan. So, so good work on your end. With COVID in the middle. With, yeah, with some COVID. <laughs> All right, so if you don't need me, I'm gonna go find out why my son is marked absent from school. <laughs> <laughs> I love how I get these texts on my phone yeah. and on my wrist that say your son is marked absent from school. <laughs> And he's probably in the next room doing classwork. <laughs> he's down, yeah, he's probably downstairs doing classwork right now. Great. Thank you, Vanessa. All right. Thanks, Thank Vanessa. Thank you so much. Have a good weekend. You right, as well. Thanks. Okay. Any summary or should we move into um, public comment? I'm, I'm all set for now. Um, so. Any last words on Vanessa? And then... If not, let's go into public comment. I think we have a couple here. We have one left. Ms. Bristol is left. Um, her hand is not up at this point. So why don't we start our, sorry Dave, um, but just jump in, start our conversation about what that the next meeting might look like. Um, so you receive the document. There will be a few tweaks um, that that being worked on. We've talked about that a few times, so I won't belabor that point. Um, 
And I'll be sure to sort of highlight those pages just so you know what, what has changed. I think it'll be probably three, four or five pages or something anyway. Um, so how are folks feeling about um, sticking with a Friday morning next Friday? Or do you want a little bit more time and look at maybe a Wednesday or Thursday of the following week? Um, interested in, in folks' thoughts? Again, I think probably staying away from the Friday before Memorial Day is probably a good idea. I've already heard from at least one person who said, well, sounds like they're going camping or something fun, right, Peter? <laughs> so anyway, um, I see hands up, so I'll be quiet now. Marvin? I like your idea very much, Jay, about the Wednesday or Thursday of the following week. I, uh, I think getting, your, getting a read through of the document and being confident uh, of your, at least speaking for myself, of your, uh, of having accomplished it in a good way by next Friday is a little optimistic. So I would vote for Wednesday or Thursday, the 26th or 27th, depending on schedule. Jay, I won't be available to meet any meetings on any day until at least Friday of June 4th. But certainly the committee can go ahead without me if it feels it should meet earlier. But I have way too much going at the moment to that block sounds, time off. That sounds good too, frankly, uh, in my opinion. But. Well, we probably need to back back off from the uh, Jay in terms of the date that the, the Tom and the uh, council wants to see this. Um, do we need to back from that? Well, certainly. So, I mean, one of the things, once we have, my, my intention would be once we have this, the next draft would be to post it to the website. I think at this point, even though the committee is still doing its review, I think we're certainly far enough along now to get the next version up on the website. And so we can certainly at least get that before the council. I would think. Jay, is that, is that know, the version that includes Bert's comments or is that yes. the one that we're, okay, got it. Just so, the one, the one you'll see in just a couple days, if not even later this afternoon. That it, I'm waiting to sort of button it up. Um, so I would, I would, my assumption would be that our next meeting, I don't know how many meetings it's going to take for the committee to issue your recommendation. I don't want to, you know, forecast that, but hopefully in somewhat of short order. I also don't think we're going to make so many, so many changes between what you see coming from Bert, right? The final, what I'll call this final draft. After you guys do your view, I would imagine if any tweets, they're gonna be very modest. So I, I'm fairly comfortable at this point putting this next version online um, with the general understanding that, you know, it's not gonna change in, in really too significant a way, I wouldn't think before it gets officially to council. Um, so, where I'm going with this is I think June 4th could potentially work um, if that's when the committee wants to meet next. Um, and we can let council know that, hey, the draft is online so they can start their work now. They don't have to wait till the committee issues it out of committee with a recommendation. They can start doing their review and getting their fingers in it. So it's not, so they're not feeling like Oh, now it's June, you know, whatever that Monday is, June 6th, and we just got the plan from the committee that, you know, hopefully the council have already spent a couple of weeks, but certainly Don being on council, be good to hear from. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think that June 4th dates makes sense, Don. My only suggestion would be that not only for the council, but also for the public, uh, that we're very clear in terms of what we are expecting them to do by when, in terms of, so that, you know, the risk is if we just don't say anything, hey, here, here it is. And then we're back in the fourth. We're going to be needing more time or, or have a crunch to, to make final revisions. So I, 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 my appeal is for some sort of checkpoint, uh, you know, between today and the fourth of June. Like, hey, okay, you're going to go ahead and make your edits and get them to Jay, or you know, if you're raising issues, where do they go? That kind of thing. I think uh, otherwise we're gonna we'll be jammed on the timing and we'll, we will run way into way into June I think I think you know if when it does go up on the website it needs to be prefaced that it is a 99 percent we're making one last review that, that, that we will issue it to the council but with comments probably 
based on that draft that is out in the public public purview. So, Alan, he's raised. Wasn't there supposed to be a scheduled workshop prior to the fourth? So at one point, I think council leadership would, had talked about a May 26 workshop. Um, that was maybe a month or so ago. I referenced that um, in a conversation not too long ago. Um, and sounds like council has a number of workshops. <laughs> they, they seem to be doing a couple of workshops every week. So that one had sort of fallen off the radar. So I don't think, so while that was penciled in, uh, moving that does not seem to be at least what I heard from from Tom um, that you know that, that wasn't a locked in date and and so um, at this point my understanding again on tell me where I go wrong council's goal is to have the comp plan adopted um, by the end of June so That's assuming great. it gets issued if it gets issued out of committee, let's say we're, we're fortunate enough, committee feels comfortable on June 4th to issue it out of committee. Um, you know, council, depending on what process they decide to go through, because this isn't an ordinance, it doesn't require the formal sort of first reading, public hearing, second reading. Though my understanding is I think that council has an interest in, in having um, more process than maybe what happened back in 2006, which was a public hearing and an adoption, and that was it. I think I've heard council has a little bit more uh, interest in having uh, a few more, uh, some discussion, but that'll be for, for the council leadership to figure out. But any, all that is a long way of saying, certainly I'll communicate to Tom um, this afternoon that you know the next time the committee can get together is June 4th. And I guess I'd be interested uh, in folks' thoughts. I mean, are, are, are we feeling like there's at least and again, I don't want to, I understand you need to do your work, you need to do your review, you need to do your read, but are we feeling like there's more likelihood than not that the committee's feeling like by June 4th, we should be in a pretty good place? Um, that's certainly my sense of it. Again, I think, you know, we've done that, um, the work starting back in, you know, after we came out of our COVID hi hibernation starting in October with all the, the community forums and the workshop with council, um, and the page by page go through with the committee. And at this point, really, you know, this GP COG, this latest round is really just having that fresh set of eyes on it. And hopefully we're, we're at a point um, to make some type of recommendation in, in fairly short order. Hey, I, my, my thought would be that we set um, say Friday the 28th as the deadline for committee members to get any remaining comments or input to you on this latest draft and then that'll give you the following or maybe we need to make it a, by say the 20 26th because the following week is a short week so that would give you the 27th the 28th and then three days in the following week to compile those final comments um, and then we can discuss them on June 4th with the idea that that would be the last committee meeting on this draft, um, unless the comments from committee members are such that, you know, one more draft to go, and then we can start the council process. Yeah. Marvin? Uh, I'm somewhere in the middle of what Rick just said. Uh, I would recommend for those available uh, that we meet on the 26th or the 27th. That can also be the deadline. Uh, it's impossible to, and then have the June 4th meeting as well. For, uh, it's impossible to answer your question, Jay, uh, as far as where are we? Uh, you're obviously very uh, familiar and close to, to it, and I can understand and trust even your, uh, your, your understanding of it, your point of view. Uh, because of your familiarity, uh, but you, we have to see it first. And so I can't answer that question uh, right now. But my, I think uh, if people are okay with it, I would recommend um, two more meetings, but not next, not next Friday. So your thought, Marvin, if I heard it right, would be to meet on the 26th and then 
with with maybe setting an expectation that the fourth would be the day of reckoning. <laughs> That's right. One well, one more time to uh, to uh, <laughs> voice concerns, ask you questions, Jay. Uh, have some live feedback, maybe even involve the public with their comments, and then uh, well, definitely, and then June fourth exactly day of reckoning. That's my suggestion. Jay, looking at my calendar again, if we had a meeting on the 26th, as long as it was, as long as it didn't go beyond nine, I could do that. If that makes sense, given Marvin's concerns. It would be the same for me. It would have to be as early as possible. Yeah, I mean, could we make that an optional? If people have questions that they could chime in on the 26th, not mandatory in any way, but uh, if, if council or if uh, committee members feel like they've got substantial questions that aren't just um, wordsmithing, that they can, we can do a quick meeting on that day and and then do a for a real formal hash on the on June 4th with the comments that you received, with the expectation that we're going to move it on on the 4th. I agree with that. I think that makes sense, Dave. Sounds like we have consensus around that that idea. So we'll uh, staff will work to get get that up on the agenda on the uh, website, so folks know when our meetings are. And like I said, we'll also get this once we get the the next version of the of the plan here. We'll we'll get that posted again. The the idea of not posting every single sort of working draft is we don't want to confuse which document folks should be looking at. So, and I'm really saying that for the benefit of anyone. I know we've talked about that as a committee, but I'm saying that for the benefit of those that might be watching this at some point in the future. Um, so. So, uh, so a optional meeting on the 26th, ideally for no more than an hour starting at eight and then big, hopefully final wrap up meeting on the fourth. And submit any questions to Jay, you know, during that time frame, so that uh, Jay can flesh them out. And um, if they're substantial, we'll have to we'll have to talk about them. If it's just you know wordsmithing, then I think um, you know we, it's something we can defend. Then I think you know we just get consensus of the group to move forward and and push it on to the council on the fourth. Sounds sorry. good. One comment about the, uh, you know, the public input. Uh, we'll be getting public input along the way between now and the 26th. Uh, so hopefully we can, you know, factor some of that in. And in terms of the workshop people were asking about that, it gets hellish here the week of the, you know, the end of the month with the budget and uh, a bunch of other things coming due. So but I think there's a good opportunity for us, uh, for the council to work in, um, uh, workshop, uh, with some sort of public hearing, you know, we, we have had a pretty good practice with doing that, allowing extensive public comment. So we'll, we'll find a way to do that, make sure that the public has, uh, you know, some dedicated time. Jay, do you have the bandwidth to do this for the next three weeks? <laughs> yes, wanna... I do. Okay. <laughs> If there's a light at the end of the tunnel, Dave, we'll uh, we'll make it happen. <laughs> yeah, no, nope, yeah. I think we're good. All right. Good, good. meeting. Very good. Vanessa did a great job. I appreciate her, yeah, her work. Yep, excellent. Yep. I think that was very good beneficial. Yep. So we wrap it up. Anybody want to make a motion to adjourn here? Move to adjourn. I'll, I'll second. second. All right. All in favor. Thank you all. Have a good weekend. Thanks a lot. Great meeting. Thank you, Jay.